one man, two instruments, two necks. Must us <laughs> dive right into it, man. Sure. You have a man of many talents. Maybe we might touch on it, flies helicopters. <laughs> But uh, you see here, he's playing two instruments. Talk to me about how that started, because you will, have, you have said in many other interviews, you're a bass player. That I'm a bass player. That to dabble in guitar. Yeah, I'm a terrible guitar player. <laughs> I really am. I, I'm a bass player, but... Uh, so how did that start? And then talk to us real quick about how the evolution where you came up with the double neck kind of sure. system. Uh, so it all started, uh, I knew I wanted to start a band. That was, in my mind, it was probably going to sound like L1011, but I didn't know exactly how I was going to do it. Uh, I got Tim, my drummer. And then I thought we would probably get a third person, maybe a keyboard player or something. And uh, Tim said to me, now this is, this is 20 years ago. He said, have you, have you ever heard of a looping pedal? I said, no. He said, I think you should check that out. That might be cool for this. So I borrowed one from a friend, went to band practice, right out of the gate, we tried it, our eyes lit up and we thought, oh my God, could we just do this, just the two of us? Because that would be sick. Yeah. And so right out of the gate, we really, really, really wanted it to be a duo. So then I wanted there to be more tonal flavors. Like I knew I was going to use a lot of effects, but I had a guitar at home, so I brought it and I would, you know, I would loop a bass line, unplug the bass, set it down, pick up the guitar, plug the guitar in. So real crude. Super crude. <laughs> plug in the guitar, loop the guitar part, Unplug the guitar, set it down, put the bass back on, plug that in, do a high bass part. And it was just, it was just too much. And we were, we tried putting the guitar on a snare stand so I could just walk up and play it, and that didn't work. And then I was watching VH1 Classic one night, and a, a Genesis video came on, and that guy, I think his name is Mike Rutherford. Yeah, he, yeah, he had yeah. a double neck, a guitar bass double neck in the video, and he wasn't using it like I do. But when I saw that, I thought, oh, that might be the trick because then I can just flip a switch instead of going through all that rigmarole yeah so I went on eBay and this actual guitar was there for sale and I got it <laughs> wow yeah and it's been my main guitar bass whatever you want to call it for t 20 years this is a 1977 carbon bass and guitar double neck um, the the electronics on it these are the original pickups and volume tone this is just a uh, coil splitter so you got single coil or okay. humbucking this is some kind of a phase canceling switch I, I even my guitar repair guy even the guys at carbon aren't sure exactly <laughs> what it does <laughs> i think it's a phase canceling or something and then this is to pick up selector and it's the same thing up here for the guitar now do you use those phase switches at all or no no i just leave them as they are because okay. i think that's a great tone okay every once in a while i'll switch these to get a different guitar tone but the bass sounds really good like that, so I just leave it. Okay. This switch is the magical kind of switch. If, if I'm here, only the bass is audible, this is muted. Okay. If I switch it here, the guitar is on and this is muted. If I put it in the middle, they're both on. So that's like that little intro I played for you, they're both on, so to speak. Yeah. You can hear them both. So, for example. But if I flip that, there's nothing. And I'm sure at this point, when you do bring out the double neck, you're only using it for songs that require both, both instruments at the same time? Yeah. Well, we do have some songs where I don't actually play both at the same time. Well, or is it maybe you're making loops, I guess, with the guitar? Yeah, so sometimes, like, like that bit I just played you, I'm doing both at the same time. Other times, you know, it'll, it'll be the bass, I'll do a bass part, flip it put some harmonics on, flip it back, do a melody on the bass, something like that. So I'm going back and forth. It's not always both at the same time. Gotcha. And what about for strings and tunings that you're using here? Yeah, I use weird tunings. So these are Ernie Balls. Uh, the guitars are tens. These are this, I think they're called slinkies. This is a short scale bass. So it's, um, I think the low string is 105 and the high, highest string is a 45. Okay. And I, the reason I didn't say E and G is because that's not what they are for me. <laughs> yeah. So from low to high, this is D. So it's just E tuned down a whole step. Mm -hmm. Then A and D like normal. But the G string, I crank up to A. So it's a whole step up. So it's root fifth, root fifth, which makes for some really great harmonics that you can't get otherwise. Like, like just even, to me that sounds beautiful. And in standard tuning, you can't get that. 
And now the 45, is that because it, the tension otherwise will snap? If I go higher, yeah, if I go higher than 45, I could damage the neck or just break the string. Okay. So 45 seems to be about the limit. All right, and then uh, you said just Ernie Ball slinkies, tens on those? And yeah. what about for tuning on the guitar? Tuning on this one. Let's see, it's E, A, D, so that's just normal. But Standard. then G string, I crank up to G sharp and then B, E. So like in that, that one I was playing you, it's an E major. So I can hit an E here and then these strings open. Oh, okay. Now if that was G, it would be a minor and it wouldn't work for the song.